Hey what's happening guys, welcome to our third Grunt.js tutorial and in this video we're going to pad out our Gruntfile.js. Alright then guys, so in the last tutorial we went ahead and created our Gruntfile.js, it's right there and currently there is nothing in it at all, but we're going to pad this out in this tutorial. But first of all, let's take a look at exactly what the Grunt file is for and I've split this up into three points. So first of all, it configures our tasks and it tells plugins where to find certain files. Okay, For example, if we want a plugin to run a task on our CSS files, then we're going to tell that plugin in the configuration where to find those files. Okay, So that's number one. Number two, we can load plugins into this Grunt file. For example, we can load in an Uglyfy plugin, which is going to run a task to Uglyfy our files. And that basically just means compress them or minify them. Um, and that's number two. So number three, we can register tasks in there which need to be run. Okay. So for example, if we load um, a plugin in, which is going to do something, and another plugin which is going to do something else, we can create a task which runs both of those plugins simultaneously. Okay. And if that doesn't make sense now, it is going to make sense in the future when we look at plugins. Anyway, so keep those three points in mind. And let's go into the grunt file.js and start padding this out. So, like I said, at the end of the day, this is just a module in Node.js at the minute. So, what we need to do is export this module. And if you don't understand that, again, you might want to check out my Node.js for beginners tutorial series down below. There is quite a few tutorials in there about modules and how we export them, etc. So, module.exports equals a function. And this function takes in the grunt object. Okay, so we're going to use this grunt object inside this module.exports function. So, like I said, this is split into three sections. So we're going to comment out each section as we go along. So the first one is the configuration. So the way we do this is by first of all saying grunt.init config, like so. And then we pass in an object into this function. Okay, so it's just on this grunt object that we're working with, and we passed in there. And the method is init config, which means basically initialize the config, and this takes an object. Now, in here, we're going to pass in options to plugins and references to files etc. Okay. And we're going to take a look at that when we create or when we install a plugin into our project. So we'll leave that for now. But that's the first thing we do in this grunt file.js, which is this top one right here. All right. So we configure everything in here. The second thing on the list was to load plugins into the file. So if we go down here, do a little comment and say load plugins. And the way we would load a plugin in is by saying grunt dot load npm tasks okay and then right here we would install a plugin or reference a plugin that we've installed down here okay now we're not actually going to install a plugin in this tutorial so we're going to revisit this possibly in the next tutorial so finally the last thing on the list that we do in that file is register tasks which need to be run. Okay, so if we come here and say register tasks, then what we can do is say grunt dot register task. And then we're going to give this task a name. And for example, I'll just say run. Okay, and then I'm going to pass a function into this task as well. I'm just going to create like a dummy task at the minute. This is not going to really do anything useful. I'm just showing you how they work. So we say grunt dot register task and we give our, uh, our task a name. Now in this instance, I'm passing through a function, but in future instances, we might just pass through a reference to the config where to find that task. So let's do something. We'll just say console dot log and then I am running. Okay, cool. So let's create another task. We'll do two. And I'm going to say register task, and this one is going to call is going to be called sleep, and change this to sleeping. Okay, cool. So now 
we have created two tasks, right? These two bits, we've not really done anything with them yet, but we are registering tasks. Um, and I'm gonna run these tasks now, just to show you how they work. So down here in the terminal, I'm gonna say grunt, and then I'm gonna put the task name. Now, this task name is run, and this task name is sleep. So let's say grunt run. And this is how we can run tasks that we register. We say grunt first of all, and then the name of the task. So let's go ahead and run that now. And hopefully we can see running the run task, I am running. And again, if we do the sleep one, so we'll say grunt sleep. This is gonna run the sleep task and log this to the console. So now we've created two tasks and we're running them. And yeah, these don't do anything useful at the minute, but I just show you, I wanna show you how we create or register these tasks and they are gonna get useful in the future. I wanna show you one more thing when it comes to registering tasks, and that is how we can fire both of these off at once. So to do that again, I'm gonna say grunt.register task, and this time I'm gonna uh, call the task all, as in I want it to run all of the tasks, and I'm gonna pass it through as a second parameter, not a function, but an array of tasks I want to run, and it's gonna be sleep, and also run, so it's gonna do both of those things at the same time, something I wouldn't normally recommend in everyday life, but uh, let's say grunt now and say all, and if we run this, then hopefully, oh, we get an error, and that's because I probably said grunt, you can see right there, so let's say grunt all instead of grunt, and hopefully this is now gonna run both tasks, you can see I am sleeping, I am running, so it ran both of those in order, cool. So that is how we register tasks. And believe me, these are gonna get much more useful in the future in later tutorials. I just wanted to show you how we can kind of pad out our grunt file. And uh, these are the three things we do in it. And I know we've not looked at these in much detail yet, but in the next tutorial, we are gonna install a plugin and we're gonna pad out the configuration as well for that plugin. So until then, any questions, leave those down below. Otherwise, I'm gonna see you in the very next tutorial.